developed by vicarious visions. What's up guys, Tevin here back again with a brand new Let's Play for you guys. We're continuing on with the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy series by moving on to the next game in the order, which is going to be Crash Bandicoot 2. It's Crash Bandicoot 2. Cortex strikes back. Alright, so as always, go ahead and start a new game. I'm going to disable my autosaves and save all my stuff. So let's begin and watch the cutscene. <laughs> Crystals, of course. No. But Doctor Cortex, to reach full power, we need not only your master crystal, but also the remaining twenty-five slave crystals from the surface. How do you expect to retrieve them when we don't have any Earthbound operatives left? You fool! Do you think I'm unaware of the situation? If we don't have any friends left on the surface, then we'll need to find an enemy. Crash! Crash! Make yourself useful, big brother, and bring an extra battery for me. Alright, so we are back in your trailer crash, and this time Coco's here, who's actually giving us a reason to really go on this little adventure, as I say, to like the catalyst. Anyway, big improvement in this game. We can now like um do a slide crouch in this game, so that's gonna lead to more opportunities for better platforming, more of the ones I was used to. Out of like the three Crash Bandicoot games, two is probably hands down my favorite, even though I really haven't even like started doing three yet, officially. I played a little bit at my friend's Garrett's house, but I didn't really like go all the way through it. But in that game, uh, the platforming is a lot better too, because you have even more like um, power ups that you can do to make platforming such a breeze. But anyway, um, now that we got this, if we continue on through here, this one's not really considered a level, it's just a catalyst to give us to the main hub world of this game. Well, well, well. If it isn't Crash Bandicoot, welcome. I apologize for the crude means used to bring you here, but I'd rather expect a written invitation would have been turned down. I need your help. Surrounding you are a series of five doors. Through each door lies a well-hidden crystal. The crystals look like this. Bring me the crystals, Crash. That is all I will say for now. We will speak again. Alright, so there's our objective. For some reason, Cortex wants us to help him get these crystals. So, in each level that we go through, the way it's set up, there are going to be five levels in um, a chamber room, as well as one door that leads to a boss fight, and we want to collect all 25 of these crystals in order to beat the game, so those are going to be like required things you need in order to finish the game, so I will be going for those. Um, just like how I did in Crash Bandicoot 1, this will be a any percent run, but towards the end, um, once I have a bit more time, I will go ahead and show you guys the 100% ending, um, which is different in this game too, like how it was in Crash Bandicoot 1. However, this one's more definitive um, in terms of like, you doing this is I think what canonically happens um, moving on into the next game. So anyway, like we're going to do here, another, um, way, another thing we could do now is if we jump and press circle button, we'll do a little slam, and we want to do that on that platform over there to go down to this hidden area so we can collect the, the boxes that you would miss normally if you walked past it. Um, like I said before, how it's an any percent run, I won't be showing me getting everything on screen just because that's going to make this go on a lot longer, and hi, I want to like hurry up and get through this like as quickly and efficiently as I can. Even though I am a bit more familiar with this game than Crash 1, um, 
a 100% one wouldn't be that difficult for me to do, but it's just for time constraints. This is the more beneficial way I like to do it. And plus, it's a lot less stressful for me to do in terms of recording. Even though, like always, this one's going to be post-commentary too, just because I like to focus when I'm doing um, platform-heavy games such as these in order to make sure like I don't have so many things I have to edit out when it comes to you know, the editing process. Um, also, just like the first game too, I will be linking the uncut versions of these videos on to YouTube as well in an unlisted playlist, so you guys can just click on those squads in case you want to see, like, you know, exactly how well did I do on this game, like, from start to finish without any editing, cutting out any failed attempts and whatnot, in case you guys want to see that. But anyway, we have now finished the rest of the area over here and unlocked, or not unlocked, um, use the nitro crate destruction box to destroy any of the crates that we um, can't touch, which is going to be the first appearance in this game. Um, Crash Manica 2 was the introduction to the nitro crates because we never saw them in the first game and they're one of the signature series that you would see in Crash Bandicoot moving forward from here on out. They're going to be light green containers that are highly explosive that blow up upon touch. You guys saw them in my Crash Bandicoot 4 playthrough. Um, didn't see it in one because they didn't exist then. So yeah. So that's pretty much how I plan on having this one set up. Um, for the most part, the bonus stages act exactly the same. They're a bit more varied in terms of their completion design. Um, in my opinion, I feel like the bonus stages in two are a bit more, a little bit more complex than they are in one. And so is the level of completion you need to do in order to get the gems. Because in this game, um, sometimes they'll range between break all the boxes in order to get a clear gem, um, take a secret route to get the gem in like a death run, which is basically reaching the end of, or reaching a certain part in the level without dying and then taking a route over to the other side in order to reach a gem. And then the third one would be, um, completing the level in a certain amount of time. Those would be the three main ones that you need to do in order to get clear gems sometimes, other than just, you know, collect all the boxes, which is the main one that you can get. But anyway, as we can see up here, this is going to be the objective of what we want to get in every stage that we need to do in order to finish the game. So those ones are unmissable, uh, meaning you have to get them, even if you finish the stage without collecting it, at some point you need to go back and get them in order to continue on. And as you can see here, I missed the box, so this is this is where I got annoyed, like, okay, let me go back and get these, and get that last box, because I know where it is. Um, it is possible to jump over those gaps like I just did. I tried to do it um, beforehand too, so I didn't have to fight those bulls, but um, it worked every now and again, sometimes it didn't. Uh, it's just a good way to skip through the level, especially if you're trying to do the time trials. It's just getting the timing down for when you do your slide and then your jump, because you want to start jumping at the very end of your slide in order to get the maximum height in order to like reach over the distance and it's going to be over here up in the air I was just misjudging of where I need to like spin jump to get it so there we go now I got it so now at the end of this level we reach the ending we will be able to get the clear gem for this one and the color gem you can also get in the stage two however in order to get the color gem for this game um, at least for this particular level you have to clear it without breaking any of the boxes so the color gems are a bit different to collect too in this game as well, so you have to play this stage twice in order to do it. It's a bit more lenient in terms of you don't need to finish the stage, break all the boxes, and don't die, like how one is. They, they let up a little bit. And of course, no gems are the same in terms of completion to collect them. So only the blue gem will be don't break any boxes to get to it, while the red gem will be something else and so on and so forth. Um, Oh, never mind. I know I can't see. Well done, Crash. I knew I could rely on you. Now listen carefully. These holograms are hard to maintain. During the course of my intellectual pursuits, I have stumbled across a force that threatens to destroy the world. The crystals are the only means of containing it. The fate of the world is at stake. It is imperative, therefore, that you bring them. To me. Are you there, Crash? 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 Are you there, Crash? Are you there, Crash? Okay, so throughout the game we will be interrupted 
um, as we com- uh, as we collect a certain amount of crystals by Cortex, as well as our sister too. And if you are playing as Coco when those cutscenes happen, it'll automatically switch you up just because in this game too, Coco wasn't a playable character in the original version, so there's not really any cutscenes that involve her, or there's not any levels that involve her particularly. Um, there will be levels like how there was in one of where we're going to be um, riding on animals. In those levels, they'll automatically switch us from Coco to Crash, as well as boss fights too. As soon as they start, you'll be switched out. So yeah, for the most part, uh, this is this one. The crystal for this one, uh, not the crystal, but the colored gem for this one. You have to take a certain path from a different level in order to open up a secret warp room in order to come through this level to get it. So, um, I won't get the color gem in this one. Um, I'm still debating whether or not I should show you guys me getting all the color gems in this game. I didn't really want to show it in the first one, but I feel like I'll do it later on just to show you guys it. But in this game, it's a bit more simpler and it wouldn't kill me, but I am really down on the wire here in my time. So if you see over here, that's where the red gem is. Um, the path that I was just talking about will lead you to fall from there, um, down here to actually get the gem. But since we can't do it right now, oh, I got hit by it. Since we can't do it right now, we'll just leave it alone for right now. And of course, the bonus stages are back again. Um, I really do not like the ice type level bonus stages, just because I don't like the slipperiness of the ice in this one, just because, like, it's very hard to, like, navigate yourself through it, and I find myself really struggling when it comes to like getting the timing down for some of these instances. Um, of course I'll show you guys me doing some of the bonus stages. I like mostly skip a majority of them. Sometimes I'll step on and do it just so I can get the checkpoint, but a majority of the time just like I'll just jump in, die, and then alright let's move on just because I wanted that checkpoint just to be safe. And of course, the main way how we take out enemies in this game is still the same. Either you jump on them, or you attack them with your spin attack. Or, now in this game too, you can also uh, slide into them as well. And we come back over here, we can hit the crate to destroy the nitro um, boxes throughout the level. Because that's how you're going to be able to destroy all them too, since they count towards overall completion for your crate total. So let's make sure we collect this gem. And here's another character in the uh, Crash series, Penta the Penguin. Um, they are another um, character that's prevalent in the manga for this game, um, for this series. I believe, um, at least from what I remember, like I vaguely remember this little tidbit, but um, Penta Penguin, I believe, Crash is a bit of a player in this game. Like he, he's not even like he's not even thinking about it, but a lot of people find Crash attractive, and one of those such people was, I believe, Penta Penguin's girlfriend. Or was Penta a girl? It was one of, either it was Penta Penguin or their girlfriend. I'm getting confused on their gender right now because it's it was a long time that I wrote this. It was back when I was doing the Crash Bandicoot, uh, the Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel gameplay that I was like reading all this stuff anyway to figure this out. And of course, there'll be more tidbits to share throughout this game as well. Uh, is there another cutscene? Yeah, there is. <laughs> well, Crash, <laughs> know this. As long as you are allied with Cortex, you are my sworn enemy, and I will do anything in my power to stop you. <laughs> if the fate of the world is truly your concern, you must be gather the gems, not the crystals. If you obtain all 42 gems, I can use them to f- f- focus a laser. Ah, yes, a laser beam that will destroy Cortex and the space station he has created. Until then, I must use my forces to stop you <laughs> from gathering crystals. <laughs> Alright, so just like how he said, he's the one who's actually sending all these enemies and whatnot to fight against us to stop us from gathering crystals. Because, as Cortex said, he wants our help in order to get these, so he wouldn't be sending bad guys to stop us from helping him. So, um, at the end of Crash Bandicoot 1, how you guys saw with the alternate ending that I did, 
Um, it did tell you what happened to um, everyone, all the bosses at least, after the events of Crash Bandicoot 1. And for the most part, all those are prevalent in case of, um, well, everyone it makes sense for. However, in this game, all the bosses except for um, Ripper Roo and Cortex actually make a return. Everyone else besides those two, they're gone. They're completely doing their own thing now until later games. So we won't be seeing Koala Kong, we won't be seeing uh, Papu Papu or Pinstripe. They're all, they're all doing their own things like how you saw at the end of the video where Pinstripe went to Chicago, uh, Koala Kong's in Hollywood now. Uh, Ripper Roo's thing, that actually came true too leading up to this game because I like how they did his little thing, how he went to college and got <laughs> intense, <laughs> intense therapy sessions in order to move through. Um, as you can see towards the bottom right on the screen, there is a little timer. That's basically for another clear gem for this particular level, is finishing it within that little time limit over here in order to get the clear gem, at least to get one of the clear gems. Um, some stages will have one to two. One will always be collecting or breaking all the crates, while the second one will be one of the three things I said before, either completing the level um, in a set time, or reaching a death route and finishing that to collect the gem. But the main important things that we want to collect are the crystals. We can worry about the gems later on. But so far, so good. We're looking pretty good so far on our adventure. And there are secret entrances in a lot of these levels. Um, I will try to make note of them when they have appear. Three crystals. Not bad. I see you are getting the hang of it. I need to conserve power. I will communicate with you again after you retrieve the fifth crystal. I still keep like getting confused like when those cutscenes will show up because they show up at random times too. But anyway, for right now we're going to do the pits. We're turning levels that, um, or level variants that make a return to this one are the um, forward facing boulder chasing levels and the riding levels that we do on animals. But thankfully those ones aren't as bad as the, some of them are, but they're not, I find it at least, not as bad. I don't know why, but in terms of like difficulty, I feel like um, it goes from like one, two, and three, from like one being the hardest up to like three being one of the easiest ones compared to so far. And uh, if we include four into that, then I guess it'll be four, one, two, three. So this one has a split path. Um, you want to really do the right hand pathway first because it has a trail of boxes that lead up to the end over a huge gap and you won't really be able to go back that way. But in case you're trying to break all the boxes, go to the right hand side, finish that path, and then walk over to the left hand side to collect these boxes on this side in order to get the um, breaking all the boxes clear gem. But you also want to make sure you gather the crystal here, so that's why I went this way. Um, I believe in another like one or two videos there will be an instance where I had to replay a level just because I went down a different pathway than I was supposed to and that pathway didn't have the crystal I was looking for so I had to redo this level again just to get it and that was a little annoying. It added some extra time onto my run even though this isn't supposed to be a speed run. I, I would just like to see like how fast I can complete it from start to finish. Although me doing these bonus levels doesn't really help in that regard, but oh well, it's it's whatever. I can do whatever I want. It's my channel. <laughs> so a big thing about um, the platforming in this one, um, all the regular boxes still come back. Um, they still operate the exact same way too, except for these dark boxes with reinforced metal plating on them. In order to destroy those, you need to jump and slam into them um, with both Crash's body slam and Coco's double leg drop. But otherwise, like these stages, mm, they vary in difficulty. I feel like sometimes, like the later ones, will be sometimes easier than the earlier ones, but that's only for some of them. They all vary on difficulty. And we will be having another new type of gameplay element introduced, but that won't be in towards like much later on, like I believe in like the final area of the game. Um, mainly the reason why I'm bringing it up is just because I want to make sure everything's clear right off the bat so you guys know everything's going on. So, we have 42 out of the 53 boxes. 
or is it 43 now? It should be 43. Oh, this one really messed me up. It messed up the camera angle when I was going down, so I have to keep jumping back just to get a rough estimate of where they are so I can see where I need to jump to hit them next. So it was weird that that actually happened. Uh, these turtles, the ones with the spikes on the shells around the side, you want to jump on them, while the chainsaw turtles on the top, you want to slide into them. There'll be instances where some enemies can only be killed by jumping on them, while others can only be killed by um, sliding. And then there's going to be the unique ones that will switch between doing both. And those ones are very heavily prevalent in the final areas of the game. But um, at that, we're now at the end of our time for this video, so I should start getting ready to do this outro. So as always, let me know how your day is going down in the comments section below. And thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back. Until then, I'll see you guys next time. So take care, everyone.